Hello Edge Yoga School, my name is Ashley Campania of Ashley Campania Yoga. Welcome to my restorative yoga class. Today we will need a mat, two straps, two to four blocks, two blankets, two bolsters, a chair, and the wall. Um, if you have belts or scarves at home that can substitute for yoga straps, books or weights um, can substitute for blocks, and bolsters if you have a few pillows, maybe a couple extra pillows um, to get that nice thickness that the bolsters have. So before starting our practice, let's come to Sukhasana Easy Seat. Just roll your neck around in each direction. And then take a deep inhale through your nose. Draw your arms up. Look up towards your palms. And exhale down to your knees, resting your palms on your lap. Close your eyes. <clears throat> take a deep inhale through your nose. Exhale out of your mouth. And slowly transition to Ujjayi Pranayama, inhaling and exhaling through your nose. Notice if you're clenching your jaw. Release your shoulders away from your ears. And unclench your hips. Take this moment to set an intention for your class. It can be one word or a phrase, anything that you can use to focus your practice today. Deep inhale, reach your arms up as you gather up your intention. Exhale your hands to heart center. Deep breath in. Inhaling your intention. Open mouth, exhale it out. And we're ready to begin. Okay, the first pose we're going to come in today is bound angle pose or Baddha Konasana. So for this pose, you'll need the wall for support as well as two blocks. I'm gonna use the mirror here. So back yourself up towards the mirror. Actually, use this one. Back yourself up towards the mirror and place the soles of your feet together. Using the blocks, you can choose the height you want. If you want more of an opening in your hips, do the lowest height. If you need extra support, the middle height works. If you need even more, if you have really tight hips, use the highest height. So today I'm going to use the middle height. Back yourself up towards your wall and then kind of pull your heels a bit closer towards your midsection. Press your back up against the wall hands. Rest gently on your knees. Take a deep inhale. And exhale out. Come back into your ujjayi pranayama, your fire breath, inhaling and exhaling through your nose. <clears throat> Bring awareness to your breath. Close your eyes and just let yourself <clears throat> melt into this pose. The props are there to hold you up, unclench, and then hold each of these poses for between 90 seconds to anywhere from 3 to 5 to even 10 minutes, depending on the time allotted and as well what you're needing in your body. To come out of this pose, flutter your eyes open, <clears throat> grab your knees here and just close your legs like a book and extend your legs out to the front. For a little counter pose, you could fold forward for Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold. The 
next pose that we will be going into is seated wide angle pose or upavishta konasana. So for this pose, you'll need one to two blankets. I'm going to use two today and your wall. From here, just take a nice seat on your comfy, cozy blankets and back yourself up towards your wall. Extend both legs out to the side. Kind of press your hips a bit forward and then back up where you need to until it feels good in your body. From here, just let your back press into the, into the wall. If I anger, you would use rope, a rope wall here and pull yourself up. So we're going to use straps for this part. So take a strap, wrap it around both feet. Press your back into the wall. And then pull on your straps to lift and lengthen your spine. Press your head into the wall and feel your head lift up. Feel the crown lift towards the sky. <clears throat> you can close your eyes and breathe. Create space in your belly here, your, your vertebrae, opening up your inner thighs. Lengthening through your calves and hamstrings. Breathe, focus on your breath. Holding the pose for as long as you would like, 90 seconds to about three, I would say three minutes for this one. come out. Release your strap from around your feet. And we're going to take this same pose but facing the wall. So you can replace your blankets to the side. We're going to grab blocks here. Your blocks are going to go up against the wall and your feet will press into the blocks. So you may need to adjust depending on how flexible you are. Come to the wall, press your hips forward, and then use the blocks here. Again, with an Iyengar wall, you would pull on a rope wall here and lift and lengthen your torso. So you can either take one or two straps, wrapping one around each foot, or two straps around each foot, your choice. Okay, so same sort of thing. We're using the wall to help go a bit deeper into this pose. Pull on your straps, take a deep inhale, lengthen up, feel the crown of your head lift. Let your shoulders fall, fall, fall away from your ears. Feel lifted and free. Breathe, close your eyes if you want. And when you're ready to finish this pose, just gently release your straps, grab onto the backs of each knee, and come into a seated ball pose. For our next pose, we will be going into reclining big toe pose or Supta Padangustasana. So for this pose, you'll need one block, a strap, and a bolster. You'll make your way down onto your backs and place the leg that's not nearest your bolster of pillows on top of a block. Now, if you have the flexibility, you can certainly grab your big toe with your peace fingers and use that to open up your inner thigh and hamstrings and calf. Otherwise, grab a strap, pull up as far as you can, and then gently lower your leg over to the left. The bolster or pillows are there to support your leg. And then you can work here and relax a little bit. Maybe 
pull your leg closer towards your side body. Open up your inner thigh and calf. Close your eyes and just allow yourself to drift away. If you are a pregnant mama and you're in your second trimester, you probably wouldn't want to hold this pose for more than about 90 seconds um, as the baby can put pressure on your vena cava. First trimester, you're pretty good here for as long as you'd like. But it's a great pose to open up your legs, take some of the weight out of your feet. When you're pregnant, especially, you are putting more and more weight on your feet each day. When you're ready to come out, just to bend your knee in, release the strap, give your leg a little hug, and then switch over to the other side, taking your right side. For our next pose, we will be taking halfway lift or Ardha Uttanasana using a chair. So for this pose, we're going to face the chair towards us. If we had an Iyengar rope wall, we would use that and wrap two ropes around our upper thighs. For today, we'll just use the chair. So come to a stand of a mountain pose, bring your feet hip width distance or a little wider, depending if you're pregnant and you have, if you're in your third trimester, you need a little, maybe, may need a little wider. From here, take a deep inhale and exhale gently, bend over, place your hands on the seat. You can walk your feet back if you need to or forward, depending on how it feels. And then you're using your hands to press into the seat of the chair Allow your spine to lengthen, your tailbone reaches back, the crown of your head reaching forward. Keep your belly engaged here, drawing your navel into your spine and up towards your heart. To protect your low back. Just breathe here for a moment. If this is at all uncomfortable in your knees or your hips, just create a little micro bend in your knees. Hold this for about 90 seconds. If you need to come out, rock weight into your feet, gently roll up. Another version of this, of this pose would be to place your forearms on the back of the chair. So from your stand, grab the back of the chair, place your forearms on the back. And same sort of thing, lift, your belly into your spine, send your tailbone back, crown of your head forward. Breathe. Hold for a few breaths. And then gently make your way back up. Our next pose is downward facing dog or Adho Mukha Svanasana. So for this pose, you'll need two blocks up against the wall, a bolster, and a blanket. So to come into this pose, place your hands on either side of your bolster or pillows, coming to a tabletop position, and then walk your feet back so that they touch the blocks. On your exhale, send your hips up and press your chest back into downward facing dog. Your blocks come to the arches of your feet, and then you can adjust your arms if you need to, or move forward or backward. And then your head just rests on your blanket on the bolster. It's an incredibly comfortable position to allow your head to just be supported. Breathe deeply in this pose. This is an inversion, so let your mind open up, spread your fingers wide, pressing into the knuckles in your hands. Get a little scoop in your belly. Breathe deeply and hold for as long as feels good in your body. 
need to come out of this pose. Just gently bend your knees, coming back into your tabletop. And we'll move on from there. Moving on to pyramid pose or Parjvottanasana. So for this pose, we'll use the wall and blocks. So place one of your blocks up against the wall. Choose whichever leg you would like to use for, to stretch first and place the ball of your foot or the arch of your foot on the block. Step your left foot back about three to four feet away from the wall and then use your palms to press firmly into the wall and feel your right leg open up and definitely your left leg, your back leg, pressing your heel down towards your mat. You'll feel your calf open up. Breathe deeply here. Need to come out, just gently step your way back. Another version of this pose would be to add two blocks on either side of your of your block. So take your other leg this time, placing the ball of your foot or the arch. Take a deep inhale. Feel some length happen in your spine through the crown of your head. And exhale gently, lower yourself down until you have your blocks in your hands. I'm gonna make mine a little wider. And then press firmly into your blocks opening the back of your right leg, pressing your heel down into the floor. And as you breathe here, take an inhale to lengthen your spine. As you exhale, draw your chest forward and down. See if you can get a bit deeper, opening up the back of your left leg here. If you wanna go deeper, you can always place your blocks on the lower settings, medium or all the way to their lowest level. Keep Breathing, whenever you want to go deeper, breathe first. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, draw down. To come out, gently step back. And come to standing. Our next pose is wide-legged forward fold or Prasamita Padottanasana. So for this pose, you'll need a chair and a blanket over the top of the chair. So come to a stand, standing pose. Place your legs off of your mat nice and wide and then walk your hands down until they rest on the seat of the chair. Your chin will rest on the back of the chair and then you can kind of play with how far away your feet are away are from each other. You can walk them in if it feels better. But let your chin rest and breathe deeply in Ujjayi. is there to support you, but also remember to slightly pigeon toe your toes inward towards each other. Feel an expansion on your belly as you breathe, puffing up your belly like a balloon. The more you pigeon toe your toes in, the more you'll feel it on the outside of your legs. IT starting to get into your IT band. Breathe deeply in this pose. To come out, just gently walk your hands back up until heel your feet inwards to come to standing. Our next pose is triangle pose or Utita Trikonasana. For this pose, you'll need the wall and a block up against the wall. So come to standing and place one of your feet up against the block. Extend your left leg back, but keep your heel up against the wall as well. And then press your back so that the wall is supporting you. Extend your arms out to the side. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, Jut your sassy hip back. So your, my left hip is hinging back. Keep reaching, reaching, reaching. And then extend your right arm down to rest on the block. Your left arm is in a nice long line with your shoulder, elbow, and wrist. 
you're still using the wall as support. Pressing down into the block and then extend your arm a little bit more. Imagine reaching for an apple above you. Inhale, gently bend into your right knee before you come out of this and lift yourself back up to standing. And simply switch to the other side, placing your block against the wall, left foot up against the block. Face your back toes towards the front, left toes to the front of the room. Reach your hands to the side, lift and lengthen on your inhale. Exhale, jut your sassy head, reach, 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 and then tick tock up and down. Make your wrist in line with your shoulder. You should feel a nice opening through your side here, your hip and down the side of your leg. Your inner thigh opens up in your left side, pressing down through your left palm. Reach for the apple. On your inhale, gently bend into your left knee and rise out of this pose. Toe heel your feet in and come to standing. Our next pose is Warrior Two, or Utika Parjva Konasana. So for this, you would use um, you could use an Iyengar trellis, which we don't have available right now. So I'm luckily have this this bar kind of countertop here. You could use one in your house, or simply just use the wall for this next pose. So with the trellis, you would have two blocks on either side so that they wouldn't move. They would be up against. The legs of the trellis. So for but for this one, we're just going to use one block. I'm going to place my right foot, arch of my foot, on the block, and I'm just kind of toe heel my feet out. Place my arms on the bar and start to bend into my right leg. So making sure you still have that 90 degree bend in your right knee. The blade edge of your back foot should be reaching to the floor and then you're using the bar or the wall to lift yourself up keep pressing your right knee back towards the wall breathe here you can look over your right hand lift through the crown of your head feel that that lift happen from your crown breathe for a few breaths and then gently come out of it straighten your front leg and then toe heel your feet in, switching sides, bringing the block to the other side. And you'll just extend your arms along the countertop, place the arch of your foot on the block and toe heel your back foot out. Start to bend into your front knee. Back is pressed up against the wall or cabinets. Reach your hands away. The countertop is there for your support. You're feeling that flex in your foot and then pressing your left knee back towards the cabinets or the wall. Feel that lift happen. Breathe for three to five breaths or however long you'd like. And to come out of it, take a deep inhale, straighten your left leg and just toe heel your feet back up to standing. Coming into our next pose, half moon pose or Ardha Chandrasana. For this pose, you would use a trellis again, or I will be using my countertop again. You can also use the back of a chair to place your ankle on and the wall. So for this pose, we'll use the countertop or the trellis for support as you lift your right leg up and kind of place it on the countertop. From there, you'll gently and with care Place your left hand on a block at its highest height. And then extend your right arm up towards the sky. Lift your gaze towards your thumb. Your leg is resting on the countertop. You can press your back into the wall or the, or the cabinets, wherever you are. Feel some length happen through your standing leg. Press down through your standing foot. Reach for an apple above you. Press some energy out of your, your resting foot. 
and some length along your right leg. Breathe here for three to five breaths or however long feels good to you. And then to come out of it, place your hand on your hip, gently release the foot down, and come up to standing. Coming onto the other side, place your block under your right hand. You're going to use the support of the countertop here and place your left leg along the countertop. Gently reach down, support your hand, and then once you have that support, press your back up against the wall and reach your hand up to the sky. Feel that length again. Press through your standing foot, press through your resting foot, reach up through your fingertips and down through your palm into the block. Place your hand on your hip, and release your foot down, and come to stand. The next pose we'll be taking is Great Seal Pose, or Maha Mudra. So you'll take a seat on a bolster or pillows, and then bend one leg in, extend the other long. You may need to adjust so that you're comfortable. From there, take a, a strap and lasso it around your foot. And you'll turn your torso towards your outstretched leg. Take a deep inhale, lengthen up, and then pull your strap taut and send your chin towards your chest. Breathe here. Feel the length open up on the back of your leg. Your calf open, your spine lengthening. From here, we can go right into the next pose, which is head to knee pose or Janu Shirshasana. So from here, you just lift your gaze up towards the sky and find a concave back. Let your shoulder blades rest down into their sockets. Lift your gaze, keep the strap taut and lengthen up. Come out, just come to a neutral spine, release your strap from your foot. Coming onto the other side, bend your right leg in, extend your left leg long, lasso your foot. And coming into that first pose, great seal pose, maha mudra. Find the strap nice and taut, lift your spine up. Exhale, tuck your chin. Breathe here three to five breaths or however long feels good. And then coming into the next pose, head to knee pose or Janyu Shirshasana. Lift your gaze, find a concave back, keep your strap nice and taut, almost as if you're trying to achieve a back bend here. Just a gentle back bend. Breathe. Come out, come back to your neutral spine, release your strap, and bring your knees together. Our next pose is torso twist one pose or Bharad Bajasana. So for this pose, you'll come to your seat and you'll place your legs on the, out, off the side of the seat. To start, inhale, lengthen your spine up. Always lengthen your spine on your inhale first when you twist. On your exhale, start to twist towards the chair, grab onto the backs of the, the back of the chair and pull yourself into the twist. Every breath here, inhale, lengthen up and exhale, twist to the back, maybe send your gaze to the back of the room. For women who are pregnant, I would take this a little bit more mild, just gentle twist here and maybe look back. If you're not pregnant, you can keep pulling yourself deeper and deeper into the twist. Always inhaling to lengthen up and then exhale to twist. Right. 
and then coming back around to the front, you'll come to the other side. So just twist yourself around the other side of the chair. Sit nice and tall, we'll lift and lengthen on your inhale. Exhale, walk your hands to the back of the chair and pull yourself into that twist. Look to the back of the room, gentle for my pregnant mamas. Big breath in, exhale, twist deeper with every breath. And when you're feeling good, take a nice exhale and come back to the front. Our next pose is Recline Bound Angle Pose or Supta Baddha Konasana. For this pose, you'll need a bolster, blanket on top of the bolster, a blanket here to catch your head, two blocks, and a strap into a loop here. So this one's a bit more involved, but so worth it. You want to take the strap and loop it around your waist. You may need to loosen it to start just because you can tighten it a little bit later once you get it to the sweet spot. From here, you'll place your, the soles of your feet together and then loop the strap around your feet and your ankles. Now from here, if you want to have a bit of a deeper hip opening, you can straight or you can tighten the strap. And then from there, you can place your blocks under your knees. Now, low is tight, depending on how open you want your hips. Second height, and then high is tight if you have really tight hips. So you choose where you want to go. I'm going to go in the middle. From there, take a deep inhale, lengthen up. And as you exhale, gently start to lower down. Place your arms on the back of your pillows or your bolster so you're really opening up your back your or your heart, your belly. And just let yourself open up here. Just the props are there to help you let go and not have to hold on to the poses actively. So let go. Focus on your breath. Imagine inhaling and blowing your belly up like a balloon. Drawing the breath up into your rib cage and expanding your rib cage into your chest. And then exhaling it out like a wave. Hold for as long as you like. Let go of something here. And then to come out of this pose, just stay lying down. Place your knees together. Just kind of roll off of your bolster into the fetal pose. Cradle your head in your arm and really feel your back arch into a cat spine. If you're opening up, doing a heart opener and you want to counter that stretch, so round your spine forward and rest right here. Our next pose is legs up the wall pose or Viparita Karani. So for this pose, we'll need a bolster, a blanket on top of the bolster, a blanket to catch our shoulders, a chair, and a blanket on top of the chair. So to get into this pose, Come to a seat on your bolster and slowly bring your legs up to rest on the chair. From there, walk your hands back nice and gently. Be careful. Coming all the way down into your back, your blanket should rest right under your shoulders, support your upper back, and your head just rests on your mat. This is a fantastic pose for relaxation. Breathe deeply in it. It's a great pose to bring weight out of your feet. We spend so much of our time standing and walking. It's nice to give them a little break. It's an inversion, so the blood will start to rush down towards your upper body. 
So be cognizant of that. If you start to feel lightheaded at all, just come out of the pose. Hold this pose for three to five minutes. Making sure that you're unclenching your jaw. And breathing deeply. And letting go of something here, opening up your chest. Come out of this, just gently walk your feet off of the chair and roll off of the bolster into the fetal position nice and safely find that cat back again and curl up and finally we've come to our last pose corpse pose or shavasana so for this pose you need a bolster and a blanket and the chair with the blanket on top again so we'll Bring your bum to your, to your mat. Gently place your legs on the chair. Actually, I'm gonna take the blanket away. Scoot your bum a bit closer to the chair and then gently lower down onto your bolster. You may need to adjust your blanket so that it's just cradling your head. Let your arms fall off to the sides, close your eyes. Just allow yourself to float away here. Thank yourself for your practice for coming to your mat. Allow your brow to soften. Unclench your jaw. Remove your tongue from the roof of your mouth. Release your shoulders. Soften your belly. Unclench your hips. Soften your thighs and calves. And release your fingertips and toes. this pose and letting yourself drift away in it for about 10 minutes. Once you're ready to move on and come out of this pose, gently walk your feet down off of the chair and curl once again into your fetal position. Stay here for three to five breaths. Slowly make your way up to a seated pose, Sukhasana, once again. Place your hands on your knees. Breathe deeply. Gather up your intention that you set at the beginning of class. Take a deep breath in, reach your hands up. And exhale them to your heart center. Thank you for sharing your inspiring practices with me today. Please go in peace with joy in your heart. <laughs>